Hi, my name's Andy. I am Udacity's lead instructor, and welcome to Coffee Break. Today we have Steve Hoffman, and Steve Hoffman taught CS253, which is our web development class, and he's also founded a couple companies, Reddit and Hipmunk, and so we're going to listen to a little bit of career advice from Steve. So, Steve, you've hired some people, mm -hmm. you have some companies, uh, what advice do you have? What are you looking for when you're hiring software engineers? So, when we hire engineers, we look for basically two kind of main qualities. The first thing I think is the easiest to gauge, which is, can you program? Um, we usually start off with a programming exercise. You know, I, I very, actually, let me take a step back. When we receive resumes, actually, the cover letter is literally the most important thing you can send to me. Um, because we want to hire people who want to work with us. And if they don't say that, then we, I, I, I do not proceed. And so w once I've determined they want to work with us. I don't actually look too closely at the resume. I want to see can they program. So I usually give them a programming assignment, um, and it's usually you know put a basic you know web application online that does X. Um, nothing too complicated, but that gives us a chance to see you know can they follow simple instructions? Will they set my expectations? Will they actually follow through with this? All sorts of handy little kind of real world you know equivalent things. Um, if they do a good job on that, we'll bring them in for an interview, and from there. Um, it's some light programming stuff, but at that point I've already seen a chunk of their code and talked to them about it. Um, from there it's mostly just screening, you know, are you a jerk? Like, do you fit in? Are you, are you highly, like, high self-confident? Um, you know, do you, I'm kind of looking, I'm looking for the absence of, like, these negative traits I see a lot in developers. Right? We don't want to hire people who are territorial. We don't want to hire people who are condescending or, like, when I interrupt you in an interview, do you like just keep going, or do you actually do you get like bristly and like that sort of thing? Those are the sorts of things we're looking for, um, and then from there we can usually actually make a pretty good decision, I think. So I have no formal education in computer science. I've taken our introductory computer programming class, but what what advice do you have for someone like me, someone who doesn't have that background mm -hmm. but is looking to get into the world of software engineering? The simplest advice is write a lot of code. Is work on as many projects as you can, because I think experience trumps anything else. And you'll start to develop a taste for good code, for bad code, and you know, you'll, you'll start to see the same problems over and over and over again, just like in, in any career, right? Experience is all that matters. What's nice about programming is the raw materials are basically free. Um, you don't, you know, all you need is computer time, but you don't need like physical things to, to, to build whatever it is you're building. So, you know, learn as many you know, different concepts as possible, you know, through things like Udacity or, you know, any of the other information online, and then just write software, write as much as you can, and you'll get better very fast. And certainly when you're applying to, you know, if you're applying to work at, at Hitmonk or that, that sort of thing, whether or not you have a formal CS education is not important. We just try to find people who behave as though they have a formal CS education. And actually, the, many of our employees don't have a formal CS education, but they're very good programmers, and they know the vocabulary, and they know how to you know, work in that ecosystem. Find the right people. Make sure you know you're honest with yourself. Sounds good. Exactly, yeah. It's easier said than done. OK, so in your mind, what skills or what do you need to see to believe that someone is not just a good engineer, but a great engineer? What separates? What makes that distinction? Um, so I think a good engineer, in my mind, can write anything. But a great engineer can write something that um, not only works, but um, is maintainable, is clear, um, and solves other problems. Our best engineers at Hipmunk, um, they improve our process, they're very good code reviewers, and their code is, you know, it's one, one of the things you don't get to practice very much when you're in a, a school setting or a learning setting is um, writing for the future. Because you write your code once and then six months later you don't even you don't even remember it. But when you're working for a company or when you're working for on a real project, you, like, you're going to have to come back to that code again and again and again. So making sure that things are named properly, are organized properly, are performant, so that like you or the next guy who's inheriting this code actually knows what's going on. That I think is the, it's much more of an art than, a, than a, just a, you know, something you can just kind of you know, learn from a, from a, from you know, a class or something like that. It just takes experience. But great engineers do that. And they're thinking about kind of the broader picture, the context in which they're writing code. And it's, it's tricky, but that's, I think that's where a lot of the real value is. Sure, yeah. All right. Well, thanks a lot. Sure. Uh, it was really great to hear from you.
Sure. And yeah. Thanks for joining us in Coffee Break.